Hi, I'm the Rocketeer Lady, and today we're discussing what it's like being one of the guys. In my professional career, I have learned when this one of the guys mentality can be useful. It has become almost a part of my professional toolbox that I pull out when I feel a situation professionally needs it. During my time at this big corporate aerospace company I used to work for, I was the only woman in my group. I was the typically the only woman during military ops. And I found that the only way that I was heard, the only way that I could get my coworkers or people who could help teach me things more comfortable being around me was being one of the guys. And what, what does it mean whenever I say that? I mean, maybe cussing a little bit more, talking a little crude, bringing out my Southern accent cause it's way more comfortable whenever I bring her out. I also talk about hunting with my daddy. All these things made the men that I worked with more comfortable to have conversations with me. Whether or not they recognized it, I don't know, can't tell you but I do know how they responded to it. I hate, I hate this idea that I felt the need to be one of the guys. But unfortunately, that's the industry that is out there right now. I'm not saying it's, it's great. I'm just telling you my experience. Anyone who feels they have to fit a particular narrative knows that they're not alone and that that is, that is a skill set that I picked up and I learned and I still use today. During my time in undergrad at Mississippi State University, I really felt the need to create this narrative that I had to be one, seen as one of the guys. It was the only way that I felt I would be respected, I would be heard, I would, my opinion would be valued by my fellow colleagues, friends that I made in, in aerospace engineering. I'm not trying to say that my friends were these macho dudes that put that pressure on me. I personally put that pressure on myself because of what I felt I understood the STEM industry to be. I felt that this male dominated industry, the only way I could come into my own and be a respected engineer is if the, if the male population who was in the industry were comfortable with me being a part of it. My freshman year of aerospace, I took this intro to aerospace class with about 100 people in an auditorium where maybe six girls were a part of that course. I remember sitting next to a guy and just remember thinking how much I was out of my element or felt like I was out of my element. Because of the environment that that cultivated, I did feel like there was a necessity to cultivate friendships, relationships in my, in my program and make my fellow engineers who I would be studying with, who, who I'd be going through this degree with, I wanted to make them comfortable, me being a part of their circles and their groups. It ended up being a detriment to me personally because I felt I wasn't being my truly authentic self. I wasn't really representing myself fully to people who I do, I still to this day consider really good friends of mine. My freshman year, I decided to dress almost overly quirky. I decided to dress really out of the box. I put plaids and polka dots and flower patterns all together. My, my, brother Zachary would always call it a bag lady style. I think I, I gravitated to all of these patterns and, and disconjointed tacky dress to being a way to not be overly sexy or be seen as a potential person to date or somebody who would be lusted after because I wanted to to build that narrative of you can be comfortable with me you can you can talk about girlfriends you can we can talk about girls that you find like cute that you want to go talk to give their number to I'm your wingman like that's what I want to be being out with my guy friends was always super fun we always would have a have a beer, have a laugh. Being a bisexual woman, I always enjoyed like being able to talk about 
other women with the guys and obviously I wasn't out as bisexual but it was still a more comfortable place to be for my my guy friends. I would always go talk to women for them and bring them over and be like hey we're a cool group of friends. It's true. <laughs> For some reason, I took the responsibility and this title of being one of the guys and being this trusted individual for my group of friends to heart and it hurt a lot of relationships that I was a part of in dating. I hated PDA. If I felt like PDA was so feminine and so girly that I, it literally made my skin crawl if I had a guy I was dating or boyfriend come up and try to kiss me on the cheek or hold my hand in front of my boys because that literally made me a girl. I don't mind that anymore. I recognize that it does stem from not wanting my guys to be uncomfortable. I don't want my guys to see me as this woman or as a dating material or fragile or in love or any of that sense. So in a way, it kind of stilted my growth in the romantic and dating sphere because I was so devoted to this idea of being one of the guys. I've always felt more comfortable with dudes with guys because I've always been afraid of being too feminine and I'm not exactly sure where that st initially stems from if it's from me being self-conscious about my body or not feeling comfortable being being a, being seen as a girl or being wanting to be approached as a girl just wanting to be cool because all the guys were into the same things that i was in pokemon video games reading fantasy science fiction guys were who i could connect to so i almost in a way felt most comfortable just falling into the idea of being seen as one of them as opposed to liking things that were more feminine. Even though I did like those things, I always tried to push them under the radar and never, and always tried to be like, oh, I hate the color pink. And I can't tell you where it came from. I don't know, and it's something, maybe a journey that I'm on now is really kind of self-discovery of where this idea that being seen as feminine is weakness or a disrespect. I started recognizing that being one of the guys and it was a defense mechanism that I created. And the reason I learned this was because I had this amazing woman as a roommate during undergrad and grad school, and her name is Paramita Mitra. Paramita represents the wonderful bridge that there is between being seen as feminine, but also still being just the amazing engineer. Paramita showed me that just because I'm interested in wearing red lipstick or a high heel. It doesn't matter how the the guys might perceive me, that I'm still just this, I'm a person who is an engineer, who is just as intelligent, who is just as respected. My word is just me, as meaningful as his is. And I think that Paramita encompasses femininity as an engineer and shows that it doesn't matter what you're into, what if you, what you identify as, what your interests are, that you're still an engineer and just because you wear red lipstick, it doesn't matter at the end of the day because you're still an incredible and an intelligent engineer. My femininity, if that's something that I love and it makes me who I am, I should embrace it and I shouldn't try to make others comfortable. I should always be comfortable with my 100% authentic self, whatever I bring to the table because I'm just as intelligent, I'm just as worthy to be at that table as the man sitting across from me. I think one of the biggest lessons that I've come to understand in bringing my true authentic self to the table, regardless of who sits across from me, is that I'm happier and I feel that trying to think of the right way to say what I feel right now. I feel like it's very important to get across that. The way you represent yourself, the way that you carry yourself, people pick up on. And I think that just how, you, the things that you like, the way that you're dressed, the things that you talk about should never be a reflection of your intelligence or what you can bring to the table. 
what should be a reflection of that is your work and your professionalism. And it should never be about the exterior. For any guy that's maybe watching this, you know how you can help your industry out? By allowing people to come to the table with their true authentic self. Whether they identify as feminine, non-binary, fluid, doesn't fucking matter at the end of the day. What matters is what we bring to the table. That's why I'm kind of talking about it now, is that I feel that we need to stop envisioning this industry in this cookie cutter realm, that it looks very different, it's very diverse, it's very colorful, and the, the moment that we as the industry change our mindset away from these stereotypes of a typical engineer, the moment we change what we expect an engineer should be or should look like, that's when we all can grow and become even better engineers because we're no longer looking at someone's outward appearance. We are just working together to create, innovate, and educate. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you really enjoyed this video, please hit that like button as well as subscribe if you want to see more of the videos coming out of this channel. We would like to hear what you personally thought. I'd love to start this conversation. Obviously, we all have different life experiences and maybe you found it useful in, in your career. The Patreon link is down in the description. So please, uh, you know, if you like this content, you'd like to see a lot more and you'd like to see some behind the scenes stuff, including behind scenes stuff with our interviewees, people who we're chatting with on the Delta V podcast, cool stuff like that will be coming out to our Patreons, patrons. And um, yeah, don't know where else to go. That was a little bit of a mess. <laughs>